How you doing? John Tech here, back again to talk to you a little bit about something they call hot air soldering. Uh, hot air soldering, in a nutshell, um, is the use of a tool called a, a hot air pen that actually blows hot air in a confined uh, area to, uh, in order to... Um, uh, heat up a surface in order to heat up a whole bunch of solder pads all at one time. It's a convection heat process, uh, unlike soldering on the iron, which is a heat conduction process where the soldering iron makes contact and actually physically transfers heat from uh, one spot over to another. Um, hot air, um, which is provided by a tool called a, a hot air iron, I'm going to hold one in my hand right now. Uh, one of these tools right here. Um, what I'm holding in my hand is actually a very good hot air iron. I've used a couple of them in the past, but I really like this one. It is a uh, quick 861 DW, which is uh, this guy that's over here. One of the main reasons I like it, um, actually twofold. Number one, it has a cradle that it comes with that uh, makes it very, very easy for me to cradle the hot iron, uh, the hot air iron back into place again. Um, I really like that, and it goes into a cooling mode, which cools it down uh, at a rapid rate. Um, and then two, it's incredibly easy to set the temperature and the airflow, which is the two things you kind of control with a hot air. It's like how hot it is and what the how much air is actually kind of blowing through it. Um, the hot air gun that, uh, uh, that I'm using is the Quick Q-U-I-C-K 861-D-W. That's a, a da Daniel uh, Wally. I don't know NATO. I'm sorry. I should I should probably know this. I order stuff from DigiKey all the time, so I know November Delta as the uh, as the, the two letters that's in the and why Delta's in the dang name. Why didn't I say that? <laughs> so it's been been one of those days. Anyway, um, when you order one of these things and they're not too expensive, I ordered mine for roughly around 400 bucks. Is where it was. It comes with uh, it comes with all kinds of nice little oops uh, attachments that uh, that you can add on for it on there. For instance, this comes with one. This one's got an ultra kind of confined area that uh, quickly and easily slips on to the tip of it, so that I'm able to provide the correct amount of airflow uh, associated with it. Um, and the reason you want to use hot air um, be because um, well, let me give a demonstration. I've got two components on the circuit board that's in front of me right now. Um, I've got a chip resistor, uh, what looks like to be R1 um, and a micro circuit um, down below there, which is looks like it's U1. Uh, now what I've done is I've clamped my circuit board into place, um, and uh, I'm going to. It, it's very easy to remove the. Um, chip resistor. Um, even though there's still two uh, two solder joints, it's still somewhat easy to kind of heat up the overall resistor, uh, assuming that you're using a soldering iron with a um, with a good tip. I actually just looked at mine. Uh, my soldering iron is not actually um, very clean, so I'm going to quickly put it on the inside of some cleaner very quickly. I'll make sure that I've got a nice shiny tip, kind of as that looks like right there. So nice and shiny. Very important to be able to get the maximum amount of conduction through your or soldering iron by um, uh, making sure the tip is nice and shiny. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to resistor R1 um, and heat this up. And I can just kind of remove it. I can get most of the soldering iron on top of that resistor. But if I wanted to do that for something like, say, the um, 555 timer, there's no way for me to see it. Like, I'll, I'll heat up this bottom pin right here. And that pin, uh, by the time I take the soldering iron away, it's already gone back into its... Um, oh, you couldn't have seen that. Sorry. I, let me move that up here again. Um, I'm going to heat up the, the bottom pin right here. And by the time I take the soldering iron away, that's already gone back to its solid phase. And there's, there's nothing I can... There's actually really nothing I can truly do about uh, being able to remove that. By the way, see that brown material that's on the... Um, that's on the end of that. That's crusted and dried up fluxing agent is what that is. Gosh, I'm going to try to get the, my microscope uh, up just a little bit higher so that I'm um, raising up my boom stand just a little bit so that I'm able to do that. I got my ESD wrist strap on, uh, uh, electrostatic safety precautions, always uh, kind of a good thing. So, uh, And what you can see uh, right here is that kind of uh, that brown crusty stuff right there, that is dried up fluxing agent is what what that is. That is what happens to fluxing agent as it starts to, if it's not removed. This circuit board has probably been sitting out for uh, probably like a year or five, something like that. I don't know, but maybe not five. I 
sooner than that, uh, I think. Uh, probably about three years, though, is what I'd imagine it's been sitting out with, is at least uh, at least three years. So um, you, you really don't want that to be on your circuit board. That is a contamination factor that will not be good overall. It should be ultimately cleaned up. But you do need flux to be able to do the process that we are about to do. Um, let's focus first on my R1 resistor. Um, I'm going to do a hot air rework. I'm going to turn on my hot air station, and I'm going to set my air flow for um, uh, 80 percent airflow. You can set it up as high as 120 for this guy in particular. Why not 100? Well, why do some guitar amps go up to 11? Because 11 is bigger than 10. Hmm? Makes sense. 120 is bigger than 100, so hey, why not? Maybe these guys are rock and roll fans as well. I'm going to set my temperature. Um, I'm going to set my temperature to uh, about 325, right? Um, very easy to set the temperature. There is a t two arrows for the temperature, two arrows for the air, and a channel one, channel two, channel three for a quick memory settings tool. I love this tool. Fantastic tool to be able to use. Using the tool in my left hand. Now, don't go pointing this thing around all over the place. This is blowing hot air. I don't know if you can hear that coming out the surface. This is blowing hot air out and this will this will burn things if you are not careful with where you are where you are pointing it. Um, so you do have to be somewhat careful. I'm going to take some fluxing agent and dispense some of it on top of my R1. Fluxing agent is our friend here. Not only is it helping to uh, protect the um, uh, surrounding surfaces but also to help the solder get to the point where um, it's able to provide a good connection to it a little bit later on. But ultimately this is kind of a, a protection. So I'm going to come with the hot air pen and generally give the board a little bit of a preheat for maybe about 10 seconds or so. You in general want to preheat the area and I'm waving my hand around in a very a very slow fashion trying to um, trying to give it minimized around a one centimeter by one centimeter area and then I come in kind of close to the resistor with a pair of tweezers, the solder melts, and I'm able to lift the um, chip resistor right off of uh, its place there. See that? See that? I got a lot of flux. Got a lot of goo on there is what I got. Hot air is um, definitely a little bit messy from time to time, um, it, but it's sort of necessary to be able to do. Um, one that you can probably hear right now, the uh, hot air gun is currently going at a very, very high um a very, very high airflow in order to cool it down. It's currently cooled down from the 325 setting all the way down to 195 within the time span that I first took it off and then put it, or by the time I um, first put it on the cradle to right about now. Now it's at about 165. So fairly rapid cooling rate on the guy as well. Um, something, to, something to note uh, about the uh, uh, the uh, solder that's on here is that the board does remain hot for a generally longer period of time. So, um, but ultimately you can use the hot air pen to kind of connect the resistor back into place. Although this isn't just as simple as put the resistor, um, put the chip resistor or chip component into its spot, um, smaller chip and then apply hot air on top of it. Um, the reason that you don't want to do this uh, is as follows. So I'm going to take some fluxing agent and apply it to the um, uh, spot right there because flux is our friend. The board is still somewhat hot, so the fluxing agent is still starting to um, activate just a little bit. And let's just pretend that I take my chip resistor and I say, you know what, I'm going to reattach this exact chip resistor, this 88H, whatever this specific model. Hey, let go. Let go. Can you please let go? Thank you. I'm going to attach this exact chip resistor to this exact spot here. This is the incorrect way to be able to do this, by the way. So now I'm going to come at it with a hot air pen. I'm going to take the hot air pen out of its cradle and start applying some air to thermally heat up the board. Then when I go to A, oh my goodness, where is it going? It flew off of the board. Well, that's a problem, isn't it? Right? So um, this happens to be a very bad problem for chip components that are very, very small. You do have to be mindful of not only the temperature, but also the airflow as well. However, if you have a good set of hands and you do this sort of just right, where you apply the resistor here, kind of start to heat it up, you let surface tension at some point sort of start to take over. Oops, well, not quite like that. Make sure I'm hitting the right part of this here. So now the solder has officially gone into melt. And I, I don't have a, 
I don't actually, I'm going to take a step back for a second here. I don't actually have a very good amount of workspace right now, so I'm going to kind of do this a little bit, and I'm going to kind of generally, I might be applying just a little bit too much air. I'm going to kind of move it into its place, this little bit there, remove the hot air, and there we have it. Um, you have the ability to use um, other tips that have a, a little bit larger um, uh, area that it's uh, uh, releasing the air with on there. I'm kind of using the fine pitch one just to kind of give it a try out with it here. Um, one of my main problems, though, is that I've got this large, bulky battery clip that happens to be just sort of uh, sitting right here in the way. And I've actually, I think, applied just a little bit of some damage to the battery clip in the process of trying to come in and not looking entirely through the microscope at what I'm doing. Um, but now we get onto the, the actual um, the chip, because I can't remove this with a soldering iron, um, at least not with a tremendous amount of difficulty or the exact right tools, such as a solder spatula or a pair of solder tweezers, uh, which they do make a little pair of tweezers that grabs around it. Um, but a lot of people, if they want to remove a chip that's kind of like this, um, they just used hot air. It's one of the more convenient ways to be able to do it, especially the repair people um, uh, are, are doing this. So I'm going to apply some flexing agent down to all pins of the chip and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the uh, yeah that's hot uh, it's still still pretty warm it's not blowing any hot air but uh, kids don't do that at home <laughs> don't be stupid like uh, me right there um, where is my do I have the thing I don't have the thing do I do I have the thing I thought I had the thing Ah, I do have the thing Aha. silicone spatula easy for removing um, some of the uh, parts that you may have in here. I'm going to take this, I'm going to put in the um, medium angle one, uh, which is done uh, more or less simply by just uh, snapping it into place like this, using more or less what is a, um, a solder, um, a soldering uh, uh, oven mitt. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what that is right there. All right, so now I'm going to uh, switch my hot air station back on again. Um, I've got fluxing agent down onto my chip at this point. Uh, so now I'm going to kind of uh, come on in. Again, working distance, really, you got to have it. Right now I've got like roughly, uh, how much working distance do I have right now between the microscope here? I've got about eight centimeters working distance. And really, you want to get more than that if you're doing hot air rework. You really want to get something called a Barlow lens. A Barlow lens is something that goes on the bottom of the microscope that increases the working distance by a certain amount, but it takes away from the overall um, zoom that you can really get in. Um, for instance, my Barlow lens that I have is a 0.5x lens, um, and what it does is um, it takes away half of the magnification, but it doubles my, nearly doubles my working distances, I believe. One of those. I think there's another way to kind of look at that there. So I'm going to start to heat this up while grabbing onto the chip. I'm going to provide a little bit more heat down to all of the pads for just a little bit. Hopefully you can see kind of where my guy is coming in from the bottom. And all of the parts all come off all up at one time. Um, I have the chip in my hand. I'm going to put the um, chip down so I can take my little bits out and put this guy back into his place, and if I really wanted to, um, if I really wanted to put the, the chip back into place right now, which, hey, why not, you know, let's, let's do that here. Uh, I've got the, the chip, I'm going to check the... Uh, I'm going to check the polarity. Look at that. What do I have? If, if anyone knows me by now, um, I am a fan of some of the, uh, the early Nintendo games. And uh, I, I put the Triforce um, from the Zelda games on just about every circuit board that I have ever personally designed. And this circuit board is one that I have actually designed for um, purposes of teaching purposes. Uh, it has a limited functionality in terms of what it actually does. But um, what I can do is if I want to um, reattach uh, this chip back down to the board here. Um, I'm going to put fluxing agent on all of the areas of the uh, of the board. I'm going to come here with the chip. I'm going to take my hot air pen out of its spot with my left hand, the chip with my right hand. I am a right-handed person, so this is where I'm a little bit more dominant on the uh, or on the fine pitch handling. So I'm going to come on in, get really close to my pads here and start to place the chip down in the molten solder and look at that surface tension just kind of lets it fall right into place there um note one thing that i am not doing to any of these solder joints is letting them uh 
cool down by me blowing on them. You want this to naturally cool down. Right now, if you were to touch the circuit board underneath this, the circuit board would be hot. The circuit board is a uh, made out of typically made out of what we call FR4, which is a fiberglass type flame retardant material type 4 um, that uh, um, retains heat for a short period of time. It's actually a very poor heat conductor in itself, um, but uh, it's able to like even right now that that circuit board is um, too hot for me to touch underneath it right there. I would need to wait maybe like a, a, a 30 seconds to maybe a minute or so. Or uh, the other thing that you can do is wear some heat resistance gloves. I'm actually not wearing them right now. Ironically, though, I have a pair uh, sitting right next to me here. These are uh, ESD heat-resistant gloves by Transforming Technologies. Um, and what these allow me to do is uh, now take the circuit board and uh, hold it in my hands, kind of like it is, uh, as it comes out of my uh, pan vise that's helping to hold the circuit board uh, into place. Uh, so there you go. Uh, um, doing a uh, uh, Normally, you, you want to wear this and not and not forget about it by leaving it right next to the hot air station that I've currently been talking about this entire time. Don't be like me. Be a smart person instead. Um, would probably be recommended. So, hey, uh, but that's how you do hot air rework for an SMT part. Um, if you got any uh, questions or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. Uh, send me an email if you got a question, too. Check out my YouTube link if you have a question about anything like that. Um, and uh, uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing anything else in particular related to these videos here. All right, folks. Uh, thanks for very much. We'll uh, see you on the next one. See you later.